Welcome back, everyone. Thank you for joining us here on the Simply Trade Podcast. So we are here. Um, this episode is going to be very similar to last week and where we are airing another one of those last episodes from my CPA. Uh, we are uh, just a little bit of what's going on. Um, the reason that we are um, catching up, well, there's a couple of reasons. We've recently found these episodes and, uh, and uh, had them all cleaned up and fixed up to the point where we, you can... Um, hear them without too much background noise and uh, so it's only fair that we uh, air their episodes so um, a little bit about this episode is two halves the first half we have uh, Elaine Bragg who will be uh, talking to us about um, chapter 98 she was a speaker at NICPA and so she'll be talking to us about her topic which was chapter 98 and then secondly on the second half we have a couple of people from Buckland uh, Buckland Brokerage, Buckland um, Services. So thank you all for, for listening and tuning in. Let us know what you think about these. Enjoy. Before we get started with the show, here's a quick word from our sponsor, Global Training Center. As trade compliance professionals, you want to make sure that your procedures and documentation are completed as correctly as possible to avoid any delays and possible fines. We provide a range of trade compliance courses that will fit your needs. From in-person or web training to recorded on-demand courses, we can train one or even thousands on your team through your learning platform or on our portal. We can even customize a private session for your team. Go to globaltrainingcenter.com to find out more. Andy. All right. Day one. (laughs) <laughs> All right, folks, we are at ICPA and uh, this is the first day. So last night we were going around and uh, interviewing some folks uh, during the reception area or this uh, reception time. And this morning we are talking with Elaine Bragg. She is a speaker that's going to be speaking tomorrow morning. So if you're on the virtual side, hopefully you'll get to see that uh, it'll be uh, 830, was it 8 o'clock or 830 in the morning. Uh, Eastern time. <laughs> so I was like, what, what zone, time zone are we in here? Yeah. So, Elaine, thank you for stopping by our booth here and talking to you. And uh, so chapter 98 is what you're wanting to talk about. Huh? <laughs> Absolutely. All right. It is, it is the sneakiest way for importers to classify their product so that they can get a duty reduction or duty free entry if it qualifies. And that's, that's the important thing. Um, the rules of Chapter 98 are spelled out in Chapter 98. Mm-hmm. You have to follow those rules very carefully. And if you follow those rules and you have the documentation to support it, um, chances are you can, uh, you can get duty-free entry. I want to say a caveat to that is customs... Um, doesn't really well they have to work with chapter 98 as well because that's where all the personal exemptions are Mm -hmm. when you come in through baggage and maybe you have some samples they're going to want to look at your samples they're going to want to make sure that they're marked correctly and that they're not to be sold in the united states and all of that kind of stuff and then they'll sign you off and say okay these things can come in duty free that's their discretion at the time. So that's one part of chapter 98. Uh, exactly. Right, right. And that's the part I'm not going to cover. Right. Because <laughs> I, I figure this is geared more toward um, brokers and uh, compliance people that work for different companies. Well, right. yeah, you're right. going to be looking at, so it's like, okay, so chapter 98 is one of those that covers so many exemptions, like you just said. And, and one of them is obviously if you've been traveling uh, you've bought some goods abroad, all that, and, and, and one, and you bring them back in uh, on your personal good if you uh, personal right uh, personal uh, exemption. Yeah. All right. So that's fine. But from a commercial standpoint, um, what would be one of the biggest uses of ninety eight? Okay. One of one of the things that um, we I, I work for a customs attorney. One of the things we were very successful at is we actually sued customs because they denied our Chapter 98 for lawnmower tires. Okay. Because tires are classified in the HTS in Chapter 40, as everybody knows. Okay. Okay. But the, there's a provision in Chapter 98, 9817, for 
parts of agricultural equipment. Okay. And if you look where you you classify lawnmowers, they are in Chapter 84, and they are under the agricultural provisions for tractors and things like that. Mm -hmm. So it's in Chapter 84, but tires are parts, and and 9817 has a special provision for parts of agricultural equipment. Okay. That are that are classified in Chapter eighty four, okay, and and they said, well, no, you know, tires don't are not parts of lawnmowers, and I'm going, how do you move a lawnmower if you don't have tires? <laughs> and and Customs is saying, well, no, it doesn't qualify. It doesn't qualify. So we took this case to the Court of International Trade, right, and we were able to settle it with Customs to. You know, our argument was strong enough to prove that they are, in fact, because parts have a special provision in ninety chapter ninety eight as to what is a part. It doesn't have to. It doesn't. It doesn't have to fall within chapter eighty four to still be a part. Right. So, um, and we, we were able to show that the customs. And they finally agreed with us and we settled the case. Okay. And the, and the thing of it is, my particular client imports all of their, they make wheels here in the United States. They import their tires for the lawnmowers mm-hmm. from China. We settled our case in 2016. <laughs> you know what happens next. Right. The, 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 the uh, China tariff comes China, right. in and guess what? Because they classified it in 9817. They still come in duty free. But it's the issue, the parts issue here. Okay. Yeah. You know, okay. the, when when you're looking at parts, and this is why it's important if you if you're importing parts, mm-hmm. parts have very specific rules for them Mm -hmm. that if you follow those rules and you can look at chapter 98 and you might find that even though your parts are not classified under you know the main heading like Mm -hmm. for for lawnmowers Mm -hmm. so tires are not classified as parts in the HTS. Well, I mean, there's a provision for tires. I mean, that, that's I mean, GRI that's it, that, one is a, that, that's, you know, that's why yeah. tires are tires, right? And you can't call them parts of anything, except <laughs> in this case because it falls within the, the special parts provision of, of 9817. You can. Okay, nice. So, all right. So you've got the, the one scenario with the the parts. So let me ask. What would be the application here for somebody if they're looking at their uh, imports, if you will, in this case, and uh, they're bringing in, you know, whether it's equipment, widgets, whatever, you've got parts then thereof. What would be the application? What would they need to do here based on what you just talked about? Well, first of all, you you classify your products according to the HTS. Right. But what most people forget about is they don't look at Chapter 98. Um, chapter 98 has some specific exclusions. Certain chapters, you can't classify it in Chapter 98 under, you know, any in any way, shape, or form. And I have a whole cheat sheet in my, in my presentation that tells you what those exceptions are. Mm-hmm. So, um, you know, you, you've got to be careful of what you're doing. But when you're classifying your product, don't forget about Chapter 98 because there may be something in there that you can set up a program to always bring this product in. And certain, you know, like I'm like I'm saying with the China Tire issues, you know, sometimes you may get a windfall right. that you never thought you could see. I mean, this my 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 tire company had specific contracts in place that were, were good for for three years. And and we tried to get an exclusion for, for their spare tires. Mm-hmm. And we couldn't get it because I'm going, but they have this they had this contract that they signed three years ago. They didn't know in twenty eighteen that now you're gonna start charging twenty five percent. I right. mean that mm-hmm. that could kill a small company. Right. Mm-hmm. You know. So, yeah. All right. So with that, let me, uh, 
Who do you work for? I work for uh, Barlow and Company. Okay. We're customs attorneys. Okay. And we specialize in CIT cases. Oh, excellent. All right. So here, here's what I was going to say is that for those that are listening, one of the things that you look at here is, is you talking through this, you know, being able to reach out to Elaine. If you got some questions, on it, reach out to Elaine or to, uh, you know, any of the uh, other vendors that are around. But as we're talking about this is, you know, I, I would say get the information like you just said. You classify it, look at it, wipe down from a layman perspective. Now, I'm, I'm trying to recap this to say what's the action for me, okay? Right. Write down from a layman perspective what you think or what you're trying to accomplish and then reach out to an expert That's right. such as yourself and, and your firm and all that to say, is this possible? And let them do their work. It would be well worth because there's a lot of money on the table Absolutely. with what you just said. Absolutely. And, and the thing of it is, is like I say, customs, because um, 9817 allows a three-year time frame for you to prove up your issue. Mm -hmm. So so in this case, we have to prove up that these tires are imported and are actually sold to um, lawnmaker tires. Right. They, they, they the end up, use, you got yeah, to prove the, the, the audit right. trail there for right. end and you, use. And you have to provide that documentation to customs. And so customs doesn't like this because they have to wait three years to liquidate the entry, which they don't like to do. Mm -hmm. Okay. And they don't like to do the work to to verify that you, you have followed the procedure. And so yeah. that's why initially they denied. They right. said, no, you can't do this. You can't do this. And I'm going, I'm sorry. You know, just because you don't want, you don't want to do the work. The law says you have to do the work. <laughs> well, to that point though, it's like, are you suggesting to make things easier for customs if you've got all the information right there? Yeah. Which means, okay, so that comes back. Here's another action step from this is that you got to have the proper documentation. That's right. right. You got to have the audit trails. That's right. Okay. And your record retention needs to include this so that maybe you can need to flag this. I guess you flag it after one, two years or something. You know, the liquidation is going to come up in three years, you just mentioned. Let me clarify something. I'm dumb as a box of rocks over there. <laughs> <laughs> is um, if you use Chapter 98, that puts it into a scenario where it will liquidate instead of within a year, it's within three years? Yes. Okay. It should. It should. But if the, if the import specialist knows what they're doing, they should put you on extended liquidation. Okay. So okay. to that point, that's what I was going to say is if you're showing proof, the audit trail, you, do you provide that when you file your um, the entry summary the equivalent when you confirm the entry at the end or what? Well, or do you do it we, wait we after set, a year or two? We, we set up a, an SOP for our client to follow. Right. So they they just, they gather the information once a year okay. and, and, and provide it to customs. It's not with the entry documents. You just make the claim on the entry document. Okay. Right. And then you follow it up and make sure you're within that three-year time frame that you can prove that these model tires went to these lawnmower manufacturers. Right. And well, and then when you follow up, it is essential that you put the entry number that oh, it applies to. Absolutely. So they don't have to sit there and dig for it. Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. Okay. All right. So we you talked always to help out customs whenever you can. <laughs> well, I always tell people, put yourself in custom suits. I mean, you know, they, they a lot of times people are brutal on customs. And I got to tell you, I have seen such fantastic people with CBP that yeah it's there's sometimes there's work they're trying to do whatever they're doing but one of the things that I just uh, am dumbfounded when people are so critical is like put yourself in their shoes one entry comes through and it may be three ring binders the another one comes through maybe the tires the another one comes through and it may be some liquid or something I mean it's just like it's it's all over the place right right and again, with the information that's presented, I'm always of the opinion, keep it simple, provide the information and, and, and do it in such a manner that if somebody were to look at your paperwork, a sixth grader or an eighth grader could read it and understand what it is. And they still may not understand what you do with it, but they could at least to say, well, this is 
100 percent men's cotton shirt. Okay, there you go. Yeah. And stuff like that. But all right, so we've talked about the exemption. All right, we're not really touching the personal exemption. When and so now we're talking about the parts. Is there another provision of uh, 98 that's worth talking about? There's a whole there's a whole series of them. All right. There's like uh, movies that come in, photographs, right. artwork. Mm-hmm. There's a, it's it's so broad based. It's whatever. It's ninety eight oh one where mm-hmm. Amer- you know U.S. goods return, return, return and right. then and then what Bruce Leeds did with with that and Boeing, where if you brought it in, you paid duty on it, and you can prove it within three years and exported it. Now it comes back, it comes back duty free. Um, those, you know, all of those provisions, all of the cha- pretty much all of the chapter 98 provisions are there is because an industry had a need and they went to Congress and got a special provision or like the, the Nairobi um, convention. Oh, yeah. For, no, for hand- be, uh, yeah, yeah. The protocol for for handicap items. Mm-hmm. Um, again, my tire company does wheelchair tires. <laughs> which they can claim 98. Right. So, you know, it's those kinds of things that if if your industry had a specific issue that they needed product to come in duty-free, it'll be in Chapter 98. All right. So if somebody, again, were interested in looking at the 98 with all these different things, um, I guess we've talked about it would, regardless of what exemption you're trying to grab, you still would go and classify the goods under the original harmonized tariff. Yes. What would it be classified on its own merit? Yes. Then what? Then, then you look at Chapter 98 to see if there's anything there that can apply. Then you evaluate whether the rules are so specific mm-hmm. that your product doesn't comply mm-hmm. or you cannot make it comply or... Your company just doesn't care, mm-hmm. um, which a lot of companies sometimes don't care. They, they just want to pay the duty and move on. Yes. Don't want to do all of the extra work that it takes to to comply with with these right. requirements. What would be one of the biggest mistakes people make when if utilizing the idea? Uh, not consulting with. Um, a knowledgeable person mm-hmm. and not and not um, having the documentation an SOP a process that they use to justify their claim and that's that's crucial because chapter 98 also uses um, 9802 which is US goods that are assembled abroad right and if you don't understand those rules you can get sideways real fast yes because if if you're especially if you're um at the southern border i was going to say yeah if yeah. you're at the southern border those it, those import specialists know that rule very very right. well so make sure that you're, you're using it correctly and you're following the right. rules that are in there, they're all written down right. uh, and they're all in the customs regulations as well. Right. I right. used to have a, I used to work at a software company that specialized in um, documentation for international trade between Mexico and U.S. Right. And I think we saw just about everything coming back in as 9801, 9802. We're like, okay, <laughs> if you really think it is. So. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. No, you have, you have, you Always, you know, I, I learned early on um, with customs, you know, it's you can say anything you want, but you have to prove it. Right. right. If you can't prove it, it doesn't happen. Right. So here's a question for you. Um, if you're an executive, an owner of a company, an executive of a company, what would be the questions that they need to ask within their supply chain group, within their logistics, transportation, or compliance? regarding chapter 98 to either investigate it or whatever. What would you recommend for an executive? Because they're not going to understand this stuff. Right. <clears throat> but what is it that you would suggest that they what? need to ask to get the ball rolling here? Right. They should always be asking, have we taken advantage of every duty savings that's out there? Okay. And that should lead knowledge, knowledgeable people in the compliance area to say, Oh, maybe we should look at Chapter 98. 
Wonderful. Well, again, thank you so thank much you. for stepping right. by, uh, stopping by and, uh, and uh, talking with us. Well, thank you for having me. Yeah. Thank you. Uh-huh. Okay, folks, we're back. You're still on uh, day one of ICPA. We're late in the afternoon. And uh, we're just about grabbing everybody under the sun here to uh, come by and talk to us. So I'm going to let you all introduce yourselves as we go through all this. But as we're going through and and looking at this, we're uh, looking at uh, the uh, people attending and and, uh, what do you call it? Not uh, demonstration. What do we go? Exhibiting. Exhibiting. Thank you. Good. Like us. (laughs) My elevator is just not making it all the way to the top. So you'll have to bear with me. Okay, so anyway, as we're doing this, why don't you guys introduce yourselves here? Uh, I am Michelle Snyder. I am the director of Buckland Global Trade. Oh, I love it. I am out of Michigan. Um, I've been with Buckland for about nine years now, and I've been in the industry about 29 years. (laughs) Oh, my goodness. Wow. That's amazing. Yeah. Yeah. My name is Julian Reynolds, and I'm the commercial manager. Commercial Development Manager at Blackland. I'm based in Ontario. All right. And so is that, oh, in Ontario, so yes. you're what, Mississauga, Toronto? Uh, I, I personally live in uh, Cambridge, oh, which okay. is uh, maybe like yeah. 60 kilometers south of uh, Toronto. Yep. Yeah. Nice. Yeah, right then on, on that scenario is where part of the, what do they, we call it the golden horseshoe, right? Uh, uh, yeah. Yeah, I don't know. I'm not too familiar with that. Okay. But it could be, right? I know it's this Nobel for, for fact, right? That, that's 100 So, like, to me, coming to Florida is a relief, absolutely. I'm like, we landed last night, and I'm like, oh, right, there's, there's places that are warm, like, outside of Ontario. Right? Well, I had the great privilege of uh, getting to work in Canada for five years. What do you think? Is this... Uh, yeah, no, it's, it's great. I, I, lo- I love the energy. People are, you know, um, open to exchange ideas. Uh, like, I've walked around quite a bit, and I can see companies that we are yeah, that potentially are competitors, right? They are right. exchanging ideas and trying to find um, maybe strategic alliances. So it's a very collaborative uh, environment. I really like that. Um, right. This is my second ICPA. First one was in Texas last mm-hmm. last October. Mm-hmm. Um, so this is your first big one here. Yes, this is the, this is the big annual one, right? It, that's what I heard, right? I heard, I heard this is the one in, in also San Diego. That's the other one. Yes, every other year. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh-huh. yeah. So they're like, you gotta go to those, right? And I'm like, yes. So I'm, yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm here, right? Like, <laughs> oh gee, yeah. it's like warm weather, good area. Oh my oh, god, let me yeah. Twist like, my arm. Okay, okay. Let right. me think about it twice <laughs> for a minute. Um, <laughs> yeah, no. So it's, it's fantastic. Um, great, great way to connect with new, new, new people, new energy, new vendors. It's always, it's always good. So, all right, from a Buckland perspective, what do you see as uh, maybe some of the biggest challenges you see in the in the uh, in the industry? So I'm going to ask separately here, one from the U.S. perspective, I guess, and one from the Canadian. <laughs> He's going to kick it to me because he's sales. <laughs> yeah, I can talk about it. Well, yeah. no, but even from a seller, yeah. Doug, yeah. Doug, yeah. hey, listen, I'm going to put you on the spot here a minute. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, well, definitely he's got his own challenges from a selling perspective. From mine, uh, you know, from a compliance perspective, I would say arguably the past, I'm going to be kind and say the last five years mm-hmm. um, has been very interesting and adaptive. Mm-hmm. We're starting to level off a little bit, but there's there's just so much opportunity, so much change out there, so many new regulations that we have to adapt to. Um, also, in terms of how we're working, where we're working, mm-hmm. um, we were just talking about that in one of the earlier sessions with um, 111. You know, what does that mean, mm-hmm. and and how is that changing the space, mm-hmm. right? So, I, you know, I, I get a lot of that forced labor. Forced labor is a huge topic on mm-hmm. everyone's mind right now. Um, it's about uh, how do we help support our clients when they're getting shipments held at the border? And how do we, you know, try to get in front of that? And how do we support them with these most difficult questions? And, you know, so that, that's where I'm at with my clients. For, for our uh, listeners, the, the, uh, the reference there on forced labor is the Uyghur Forced Labor Prevention Act. It's basically an anti-slavery and forced labor, um, you know, prevention, if you will. It's not just the Uyghur, which is the Uyghur, if you know, is in the northwest quadrant of China. Um, but there's other countries around, and I couldn't name them right now if I had to, but um, where, you know, again, uh, it does. it's a global application on, on some things. And your point is, 
All right, the legislation went through. Now the regulation's coming yeah. through, and it still hasn't been hammered out. So there's a lot of things being held up. That's right. Yeah, you know, at right. the borders. Yeah. Right. Yeah. But yeah. There's a. It's like they led with enforcement. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> right? Yeah. It's like a big stick, and all of a sudden you yeah. get whacked. And, and we're like, like, okay, well, tell us the rules. <laughs> yeah. Well, we don't know yet, but yeah. you're going to wham. Yeah. All right. yeah. We're going to figure it out as we go, right? right? Yeah. So it's very, it's very fast paced. All right. So from a sales, sales pers perspective, yeah, yeah I was going to say, I mean, is it like, are you challenged in trying to have the compliance people convince upper management and to use services like yours? I mean, like, not uh, really. No, no. no uh, so, so I, I see, um, oh, sorry. Yeah. I, I, I see <laughs> my, my vantage point in terms of supply chain differs from hers uh, and that. I see other side of the supply chain. I see the soft side of the supply chain, whereas, you know, compliance people, they see the hard quantitative side of supply chain, a compliance, USMCA, regulations, costs, you know, rules of origin, all this stuff. So, whereas I am more primarily focused on, okay, yeah, that's fine. That's uh, this uh, vital portion of a supply chain, but how do you, how do you make it work, mm -hmm. right? Beyond the quantitative part. And that was a human component kicks in. Our communication, visibility, compliance, and cost, right? So that's that's typically for those that are in sales, they're, they're going to get my value proposition right here. But, but that's that's generally what I talk about, that there are like four or five critical aspects to a supply chain, which are those. Compliance, communication, visibility, and, and cost, and agility too. But uh, uh, primarily communication is huge. Mm -hmm. but like the, What I see is that uh, those that understand that communication was one of the biggest deterrents through the pandemic era. Um, and they recognize that that is a weak spot. They are talking about <clears throat> supply chain, um, you know, robustness, right? A lot of times. But what would that stat mean? Though? Like, like you're only as strong as your weakest link, right? And I think that a lot of the times communication is the most disregarded point um, when the containers were costing thousands and thousands, right? Like, all right, when, when you're saying, all right, let me, let's just, because you keep hitting this communication. Right? Communication yeah. in what vein are you talking about? They are different ways to communicate um, in any in any process, right? I'm a huge Lean Six Sigma oh, advocate. Yeah. Right. Um, if you look at it from a lean standpoint, they look at the wasteful activities in a process, um, tra transportation and communication of goods or, or, or things, uh, inf exchanging information is, is a vital one. Um, from a human to human perspective, from a computer to a computer perspective, from a visibility standpoint, that falls under the umbrella of communication in my eyes, in my opinion, right? So that's how I see a, a efficient and effective supply chain working. Uh, that's the, my sales approach mm -hmm. to it, right? So that's why I don't find a lot of a, a lot of pushback when I frame it that way. I'm like, you know, yeah, I understand compliance, everything is important, but how's your communication? How's your communication in your day-to-day? -day? How is that affecting your bottom line? Like, how is that affecting? And people seem to be, those that can see beyond the hard aspect or like how much money is going to cost me. So right. this one well, case, yeah. you've got the, the scenario that uh, the companies are looking for bigger, better, faster, cheaper. Yeah. And yet on the same token, <clears throat> I always look at it from an alignment of your transportation logistics uh, area, which transportation is obviously, you know, the, the, they're looking at moving it as quickly as they can on a cycle time. Right. Your logistics, I'm talking about your distribution and warehouse. From your compliance uh, side, you're looking at crossing the T, dotting the I's. You're, but one of the key aspects is the purchasing side. Right. You know, the sourcing and purchasing side of, of things and trying to get things going. As you're looking at things, though, um, I would say are you, when you're selling, are you looking at, uh, let's say, Canadian exports or Canadian imports or both or what? We're, we're oh, yeah. all of North America. Yeah. Yeah. yeah throughout, we are also in, into uh, primarily. Again, coming back to the communication, I know that it looks redundant, but but I typically try to develop more the uh, the southern border mm -hmm. because that where that's where the main challenges are are most evident, mm -hmm. right? To a lot of Spanish speakers, right. um, um, United States and Canada, they have homogenized processes right. to some extent, whereas in Mexico they they don't they don't no. fall. You know, like the same the same type of procedures. So right. there's a huge gap in in an unresolved need to bridge those differences, uh, communicationally speaking and operationally speaking. Mm -hmm. You know, there are ports of entry into or out of Mexico that are closed some days, something that doesn't happen right, in, the, in the largest ports in, uh, you know, of entry. Well, and then with the scenario, like, for example, happened yesterday uh, is uh, the, 
Uh, basically, the uh, bridge there to the El Paso got shut down, right. and that just completely, you know, hosed a lot of supply chain right there. Uh, let alone all the other yeah. right, things going on. Yeah. So, so strategically speaking, uh, I mean, we are open to develop, you know, any any type of market that makes sense mm-hmm. for us to develop. But uh, I'm more centered centered into uh, Mexico, you know, United States, Canada trade. That seems to be the one that gets the least amount of attention, at least from our Canadian companies. Right. Right? So there's there's an niche for us too. Well, so. and the, the, the regulations are changing in Canada in particular for, with the uh, importer bonds. What do you call it? CARM? CARM. Yeah, CARM. And, and all that is, uh, um, from what I'm gathering, there's still the general population as a whole. And I'm just, it's over char- uh, characterizing that, I guess, maybe, but uh, they just the, the importers as a whole are not understanding they need to get themselves an individual bond. But that's, that's a communication failure. Yeah. Right? yeah. That, that's, that's, I come back to that, right? Like the, the importance of a, a, a part that is essential. It's just like, it's like, yeah, so critical. And it's, you know. Um, well, and I keep wanting to chime in because he's absolutely yeah. right. But, it, you know, communication to me and, and, and really I'm going to say Buckman, I'll, I'll plug us here, but it's it's very much the model that we live by. It's that relationship. Mm-hmm. Buckman is all about relationships and about kind of, you know, getting in front of these things for our clients. Like CARM, we were, we were working with CBSA right from the start. We were in their pilots. We were testing. We were helping our clients get registered and signed up and, um, you know, that that is, I think, one of the most critical pieces of the communication and that relationship building that we have with our client base. I love it. I There's love uh, it. yeah, I have a, a very creative and poetic approach to my selling style uh-huh. because, uh, yeah, I was, I was an artist back back when I was younger. But uh, there's a book or this is actually a short, short. Um, it's not even a book. But it's a short text of uh, an American writer. His name is David Foster Wallace. Mm-hmm. Um, and he wrote something called This is Water. Have you ever read that one? No. If you haven't, two two fish they meet, you know, one older and in a, in a smaller one, like a, a younger fish meet at like swimming, in the um, in the older fish asks the young fish, it's like how's the water today? And this the young fish is like what's what's water, right? And and this story develops about that, like we live in this pond and yet we're not aware of these yeah. things. So that's why again I see. Communication and I hammer it all the time. Again, I'm this poetic, you know, sales guy, but uh, but I talk about that. Like communication is in between anything, right? Like what are we doing? So I think right. the communication visibility, that is my side of the business. That's where I, I bring the added value to her. And she's a facilitator. And then she's a facilitator <laughs> and then she's a more quant. He goes quant. out there selling, and you have to make it reality. Right? Yeah. She's got yeah. to, right, right. <laughs> hey, it's like aligning expectations. That's one of the key things when people I've heard that, you know, get frustrated. You know, again, it's easy to blame the, the big carriers, uh, you know, because that's like, oh, well, the carriers aren't doing it right. And then you start looking at it and going, when's the last time you sat down with your service provider and review what they have on file for you? And when's the last time you looked at it and reviewed your expectations? Have you done a quarterly broker review or a service review or business review? All those kinds of things. And uh, so all said and done, that's just one of those things where uh, aligning expectations to capabilities and uh, being able to say, yes, we can do it or no, we can. Here's mm. your alternatives. Yeah. And, and there's nothing wrong in saying, like, we cannot help you. Yeah. And that's what I tell, like, literally every prospective customer that I meet up with. I'm like, look, I'll be transparent from the get-go. Mm-hmm. If you, you know, if we can do it, I'll tell you. If we can do it, I'll tell you how much it's going to cost. If we cannot right. do it, I'm not going to waste your time. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I won't put somebody into something that doesn't fit either. No. Just, I'd rather... I don't want to be known that way. It's kind of like the hairstylist that knows that if you if she did what she you asked for, it's going to ruin your hair and you're going to be the worst experience ever, right? Huh. Like, I don't want to be that. Right. right. No, I, get, I get that because that goes for a long time. It's like, ah, uh, you did this? Yeah. 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 I don't I don't want to be known that way. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, I appreciate y'all stopping by and it's like in, in promoting this, I, again, uh, folks, is it just Buckland Brokerage or is it? It's Well, it's Buckland Brokerage and Buckland Global Trade. Okay. okay. Just yeah. Buckland. 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 <laughs> yeah, got some workers. Yeah. So another uh, vendor out here that's uh, at ICPA. We are having a great time. And uh, so anyway, thank you for stopping by. Thank you. Thank you. Thank, thank you, you for having us. <laughs>
Thank you very much for joining us. Simply Trade is brought to you by the generous contributions of Global Training Center. You can follow the show and GTC on LinkedIn or Twitter and other social networks. Make sure you check out the show notes in the description for a full rundown of today's show with all the important links. Also, make sure that you share this with a friend and subscribe on your favorite streaming platform. We really like hearing from you. If you enjoyed the show, make sure to rate and review wherever you listen to this podcast. If you or someone you know would like to be a guest in the show or would like to sponsor Simply Trade or suggest any topic you would like for us to discuss, please contact us via email at simplytrade at globaltrainingcenter.com or you can DM us on Twitter at simplytradepod. Thank you again for the privilege of your time. Happy trading. Simply Trade is not a law firm or an advisor. The topics and discussions conducted by Simply Trade hosts and guests should not be considered and is not intended to substitute legal advice. You should seek appropriate counsel for your own situations. These conversations and information are directed towards listeners in the United States for informational, educational, and entertainment purposes only and should not be substituted for legal advice. No listener or viewer of this podcast should act or refrain from acting on the basis of information on this podcast without first seeking legal advice from counsel. Information on this podcast may not be up to date depending on the time of publishing and the time of viewership. The content of this posting is provided as is. No representations are made that the content is error free. The views expressed in or through this podcast are those of the individual speakers, not those of their respective employers or Global Training Center as a whole. All liability with respect to actions taken or not taken based on the contents of this podcast are hereby expressly disclaimed.